Donald Trump arrived at his criminal trial today, once again ranting and raving like a lunatic. Today is expected to be Michael Cohen's last day of testimony. He is currently under cross-examination. Donald Trump arrived at his criminal trial joined by an entourage of 25 people. 11 of the people who joined Donald Trump are MAGA Republican Congress members who were taking photographs of themselves. They went into an adjacent courtroom to take selfies. They were playing musical chairs inside the courtroom where the trial is taking place. Um, and then they were also making posts and statements to threaten, harass, and intimidate witnesses, which again, I believe is a blatant violation of the gag order in place that Donald Trump is directing these individuals to do that. Morgan Phillips post this photo of some of the MAGA Republican Congress members who showed up to the trial today and said, some House Republicans are at court in New York to support Trump at his hush money trial today. I think they're more there to threaten and harass and intimidate witnesses. Erica Orden, a reporter who's in the courthouse, writes, this photo appears to have been taken inside the courthouse, although seemingly in a different courtroom than the one in which the Trump trial is taking place. It's a photograph of some of the MAGA Republican Congress members who showed up to Donald Trump's criminal trial today. And as you know, each day Donald Trump's been bringing different MAGA Republican Congress members. He previously brought the MAGA Republican Speaker of the House, MAGA Mike Johnson, MAGA Republican Congress member Byron Donalds, MAGA Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville, Mag MAGA Republican Senator J.D. Vance, MAGA Republican Senator Rick Scott. Today, um, this is what Chad Pergam writes, today, Trump's congressional surrogates at the courthouse who are there include MAGA Republicans Waltz, Good, Harshberger, Matt Gates, Andy Biggs, Eli Crane, Ralph Norman, Lauren Boebert, Mike Cloud, Andy Ogles, and Anna Paulina Luna. Norm Eisen, who's inside the courtroom, writes, Trump trial report the defendant leads in his usual imperial procession, the largest yet at 25, a real rogues gallery of House election deniers, including Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates. So many, some had to go back row. They ran out of the room up front. Fittingly, the actual and good lawyer on Trump's team, Emil Bove, who, by the way, is not doing the cross-examination of Michael, Michael Cohen, brought up the rear. I'll let you figure out the symbolism. Lauren Boebert writes and basically gives the way the game here that Trump's directing them to violate the gag order in place, which prevents Donald Trump from directing others to threaten, harass, and intimidate witnesses. Boebert goes, they may have gagged President Trump. It's not the president. Let's be clear. They may have gagged Trump, she says. They didn't gag me. They didn't gag the rest of us. Why is it that fraud Michael Cohen allowed on TikTok with a shirt of Trump behind bars, but Trump can't speak out? Why is Justice Mershon's daughter allowed to fundraise for every Democrat under the sun? This is a pathetic political witch hunt. And Boebert again attacks Justice Mershon's daughter, which is a violation of the gag order. I wonder if I'll run into Judge Mershon's daughter here in court today. She's probably too busy being paid millions and millions of dollars by Democrat campaigns all across the country and won't be able to make it. Here's what Matt Gates posts. Standing back and standing by, Mr. President, with this photograph right here. How ghoulish. Of course, you know the Proud Boys line that Donald Trump said, stand back and stand by. And now you have MAGA Republican Congress members giving their middle finger to law and order at Donald Trump's hush money case, and not just giving their middle finger to the rule of law, giving their middle finger to the Constitution of the United States of America, completely giving up the co-equal branch of Congress's role to do whatever Donald Trump tells them, and parroting Donald Trump telling the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by while they are in this hush money trial. Um, you don't get more pathetic than what these MAGA Republicans are doing right here. Well, maybe you do. Donald Trump, as he always does, he shows up and he gives the, as I say, this kind of ranting and raving of a lunatic style speech to the press, 
where he says, we're locked down like Fort Knox and none of my supporters can get here, which by the way is 100% false. We previously showed you with our reporters who went there and took videos outside the courthouse. Trump supporters are not showing up to this criminal trial. They don't care about this criminal trial. It's not locked down like Fort Knox. If Trump people wanted to be out there and protest. They could absolutely do it. And then Trump has that lady who follows him around with, um, uh, with the with the articles that he likes, and he pays this lady. Uh, well, his political action committee pays this lady over a hundred thousand dollars to print out favorable articles to, for Donald Trump that are written as propaganda pieces by Fox hosts. So, like Alan Dershowitz, Jonathan Turley, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity. Greg Jarrett, all these like MAGA right-wing Fox propagandists write the articles. Then Trump has a lady who travels with Trump with a portable printer, prints out the articles, hands it to him. He edits out the portions he doesn't like, even in the favorable articles. And then he gives these bizarre press conferences. Here he is talking about how the courts locked down and every legal scholar, like Dershowitz, he says, like Dershowitz, or Mark Levin, he just mentions the same people who are who work for Fox. Here, play this clip. Are you about a conviction? Will you testify, Mr. Trump? Thank you very much. Uh, you we are going to be, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, we are going to be uh, working with a lot of people over the next couple of weeks. This is finishing up at some point. It'll be finished. Every single review, every legal scholar that I've been able to read said there's no case, there's no crime. It's a disgrace that it was allowed to happen. The judge, as you know, is highly conflicted, like nobody I've ever seen is conflicted. He should not be the judge. He should not be allowed to have anything to do with this case. He should be so far away from this case. Outside, if you take a look, it looks like we're Fort Knox. There's so many police and they don't allow people to come. You know, you're allowed to have friendly protests, but we're not allowed to have anything here. They have more police and more assistant DAs and DAs. I've never seen anything like it over what everybody, Alan Dershowitz, everybody said, there's no crime here. There's no crime. Jonathan Turley, every single person, Greg Jarrett, Andy McCarthy, uh, look, anyone you want to name, Mark Levin, great lawyer, all of them, great lawyers, great legal scholars. Donald Trump keeps on going and talks about how unhappy he is that MAGA protesters aren't overrunning uh, the Manhattan courthouse. Play this clip. But outside, it's like uh, Fort Knox. You can't get within three blocks of this place if you're a civilian. And it's a shame what they're doing. What they're doing in terms of suppression and election interference has never been anything like that. The good and then Trump wraps up his morning rant by attacking one of the prosecutors, uh, Matthew Colangelo. Again, this would be a violation of the gag order as well, that Donald Trump is not allowed to attack uh, the team of the district attorney. He can go after Alvin Bragg, which is still ridiculous, but he can attack some of the lawyers on the district attorney's uh, team like Matthew Colangelo. So this would be another violation of the gag order, as would it be when he directs the MAGA Republicans in Congress to attack uh, witnesses. Here, play this clip. A lead person from the DOJ is running the trial. So Biden's office is running this trial. This trial is a scam and it's a sham and it shouldn't happen. Thank you very much. Will you much. testify, Mr. Trump? Do you have legal team? Do your voters believe you? Do you have faith in your legal team? Will you testify, Mr. Trump? So he's had some decent news outside the courtroom. That being Then we get into some of the testimony of uh, Michael Cohen and Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, again this morning, very ineffective. Not a good lawyer, doesn't even know how to get in exhibits. This is weird. Everyone said this guy was a good lawyer. Todd Blanche again starts questioning Michael Cohen. So you call Donald Trump dumbass Donald, is that right? Michael Cohen says, sounds correct. Um, and then they talk, there's more about like Todd Blanche trying to refresh Cohen's memory with communications that aren't in evidence. And as Adam Klasfeld, who's in the courtroom says, then he slips. He asked the court to put up materials available on the screen for defendant before correcting himself. He called Cohen the defendant and then said the witness. Todd Blanche wants to admit Cohen's texts into evidence. And then Hoffinger, the prosecutor, uh, asks Cohen whether the communications are redacted and out of context. Cohen says they are. The prosecutor says we object. 
Um, and then Justice Mershon sustains the objections. As Norm Eisen says, Todd Blanche is up there struggling, multiple objections, all sustained. Blanche asks if he can approach with the judge, and the judge quietly shakes his head no, getting smacking down Todd Blanche. Blanche is simply not up for this. Doesn't seem like it seems like Blanche isn't a good lawyer. Oh, one thing to mention about when about Donald Trump's press conference, and this comes from Tyler McBrien who's a reporter in the courthouse. Though Trump spoke to hallway reporters around 20 minutes ago for about three minutes, he did not answer the following questions. Will you testify? Are you worried about a conviction? How do you feel about the debate? One of the things that Katie Fang asks is, are these trips by these MAGA Republican Congress members to Trump's criminal trial for this kind of propaganda show of force? I don't even know what you call it. Are these being subsidized by American taxpayers? And I think the answer to that is very clearly yes. And then Tyler McBrien talks about how Eric Boebert and Gates have been playing musical chairs uh, during the criminal trial. I mean, that's pretty odd right there as well. And you may be saying, why isn't Justice Mershon doing anything about the gag order? Why isn't the prosecution doing anything about the gag order? I'm at this point. Michael Cohen's the last witness, likely. I mean, he is the last witness for, he's definitely the last witness for the prosecution. They've said that. They've committed to that. He may be the last witness in all of the trial. So this trial is about to wrap up. So I just think the prosecution's like, look, we put on a great case. We are potentially days away from a verdict in this thing. Maybe a week and a half away from a verdict, but it could be days. Let's, let's get this case to the jury. Donald Trump's trying to bait us. Let's let's see what the jury does. If the jury convicts Donald when it comes to sentencing, let's bring up all of his behavior and then we'll ask for the maximum sentence based on the way Donald Trump has behaved himself and all of the things that he's done during this criminal trial. And that should favor a longer criminal sentence. So there you have it, folks. Um, we'll keep you posted as we learn more. I'm Ben Mycellus. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to three million together. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.